Hello, I'm Greg with Primal Rights. Today we're going to talk about how to measure the length to your lands in your rifle chamber. The length to the lands is a measurement from the bolt face to the, the starting point of your rifling or the lands in your, in your rifle barrel. And this, this question comes up a lot and you know, typically the most common way that guys do it is by using a little device like this here. Now this is a Hornady overall length gauge and a modified case. And you can buy different modified cases for a lot of your different chamberings. Uh, this happens to be a 6BR cartridge here. And they're drilled and tapped in the bottom. And you just thread them on to the overall length gauge here. Then you'd put your bullet in the top. And you'd use this little push rod to shove this up into the chamber stopping on the shoulder here inside the chamber then you'd push that bullet up into the lens and lock this little thumb screw down take it out of your chamber and using a caliper or a caliber with a bullet comparator you would measure the length overall length or the length to your ogive from the bottom of the case here now while that is fairly effective it's not very precise and the reason for that is there's always going to be a variation in these modified cases, especially the ones that you buy new uh, in the box. Uh, they're, the case itself is not going to be a perfect representation because it's never been fired in your chamber. If you use um, any Wildcat chamberings, a lot of times you will not have a modified case available, so you'll need to make one off of a fire-formed piece of brass. Even in that instance, there will be some variation amongst the fire form brass and the accuracy of a measurement that you can get here on this, on this little device. So, the, uh, and then too, with the, uh, with the modified case that you create yourself from a fired case, you're going to have to drill and tap that thing and, and get it on here. Uh, so it's, it's not a super easy process. And neither of these is really precise. This uh, store-bought this store-bought modified case is definitely going to be the loosest representation of what your measurement would be. Your own fire-formed case and creating a modified case off of it is going to be slightly more precise, but still not as precise as we would want it to be. So today I'm going to show you how to get what I believe is one of the more precise ways to measure the length of the lands in your rifle. The rifle that I'm going to use to measure the lands and demonstrate this technique today is a TS Customs 6mm Dasher with a Lone Peak Fusion action. Get the cheek piece out of the way here using the TS Customs QA knob. These things are fantastic. If you don't have one of these, you ought to head over to our website and grab one. They just allow you to very easily take your cheek piece off without any tools. Good piece of hardware there. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the ejector plunger out of your bolt. And you can see here we've got the Lone Peak bolt, and uh, I have already knocked out the pin and uh, pulled that spring-loaded ejector plunger out. Now, depending on your action, some actions out there have a mechanical ejector where they have no spring pressure against them. The reason we want to move the, remove this is because the, any spring-loaded pressure pushing that cartridge forward is going to push the cartridge case away from the bolt face and push that shoulder up into the shoulder of the chamber. So we want to keep that brass down against the bolt face for this kind of measurement. Now that we have the ejector plunger out, the next thing that we're going to want to do is remove the, the cocking piece and firing pin assembly. And you can just grab your whatever tool you prefer to get that done. And get that firing pin assembly out of there. That's going to remove any pressure that we feel when we are cycling the bolt. So by getting that out of the way, the bolt should move in the action nice and smoothly without any resistance. You see how, how simply that falls there? Now with the uh, firing pin in there, it's going to want to try to cock and uh, there's going to be some pressure with the sear holding that cocking piece to the rear. Um, whereas by doing it this way, this thing literally just falls down there's nothing inhibiting the, the free motion of this bolt. Before you get started, you're going to want to make sure that your, your brass that you're working with actually works in your chamber and doesn't provide any resistance on its own. 
So I've got a freshly resized piece here that I set the headspace back on about a thou and a half. And you can see with that brass in there, the handle moves freely. I'm going to take my six dasher seating die and I'm going to back the adjustment off on that thing a long ways. And I'm just going to take a freshly resized and cleaned six dasher case. And uh, the bullet that I'm using here is a 107 Sierra Match King. And I'm going to seat this bullet in here and I'm going to seat it really long. I'm going to make sure that I just barely get this thing seated in there. I want enough of the bullet in there to, to hold this thing and make sure that it's not resisting too much. So if I compare where I'm seated here with a, a different bullet, you can see it's not in there very far. So I'm going to go ahead and seat it just a little bit deeper. But the idea is you want to leave this thing really long. You want it to stay in there enough to where you can uh, make sure that you can get this bullet all the way into the lands. So yeah, we're looking pretty good there. I'm going to start there. One thing you're definitely going to want to watch out for here is that the extractor is still in here and we want to try to feel this as much as possible and we don't want to damage this bullet. So I'll just hook the cartridge into the bolt face like that and then insert it into the back of the action and just kind of guide it up into the chamber. And I'm not anywhere near able to close the bolt here and already the bullet is into the lands. So I'm going to take this back over to the press and seat it just a little bit deeper. Let's see if we're getting closer here yet. As you can see, this is just a trial and error thing. So still not quite able to close the bolt. We're still into the lands. So I'm just going to keep seating this bullet deeper until I get it to partially close. Okay, so I'm just about ready to cam over there, but I'm definitely into the lands. So I don't want to jam that bullet in there and deform it at all. So we're going to start slowing down on our adjustment now. So I bumped this bullet back 10 thousandths from our last attempt here. And I don't think that's going to be anywhere near enough. Sure enough, I'm feeling resistance right there. So I'm definitely going to want to go a little deeper. But you want to take this part of the process slowly. Uh, you definitely do not want to force the bullet and cam it in there. Uh, and if you go over the adjustment, well then clearly you're going to have to start over with a new case. Alright, so we set her back in there a little deeper. Okay, so I can definitely feel that there's some resistance here at the top of the bolt cycle. But it's not a lot. And once I get past that first cam, um, you know, then it starts getting pretty loose in there. Now, what we've done is used the primary, uh, the basically the camming force of this action up in the bolt lugs to to close this thing. Now I can still feel that there's some resistance up there and most likely that bullet got engraved pretty heavily and you can feel there's at the top of the bolt cycle there there's this little this little tick. So there's still some pressure there for sure. Once you start getting close to your adjustment this is the kind of behavior that you'll see. So a tiny bit a tiny bit of cam force required to get that thing shut. But once you break it over that, that, that cam on bolt close, the handle will, will largely just fall down. So that's when you know you're getting right up next to your adjustment. You can feel that, uh, that same thing, a little bit of positive extraction there. So just another two thousandths is all I went that time. Okay, so. There you can see that it is almost there, and I, I, I can still feel a tiny little bit of that primary extraction, but we're really close now. So uh, when you get this close, you're typically going to have any, any runout issues or any coaxial alignment issues that you have with this bullet. Um, you're going to have those come into play now, so the tiniest little bit of of contact we're really close to that adjustment and if that bullet is pointed off one direction or the other due to some run out you'll definitely feel it here it'll be binding on one side of the lands and not the others so that's something to be mindful of too we're so close to the adjustment now um, that all of these finer points come into play 
Okay, we seeded that bullet uh, two thousandths deeper than what I had it. Okay, yeah, that's really not going to get much better than that. I'll take it another couple of thousandths here just for the sake of science. So when you get this thing seated right, you should be able to just drop that bolt handle. So right there, if I were to add two thousandths to that measurement, that would be into the lens ever so slightly. Okay, so now that we've got our, our cartridge here telling us exactly where those lands are in that rifle, we can uh, grab my Michitoyo caliper here and just take a look and see. Okay, we're 2.359, so just shy, we'll call it 2.3. Six, as far as the overall length on this thing, and we'll attach our bullet comparator here and take a base to ogive reading. We'll zero out the caliper and have a look here. That shows we are at 1.822. So that's about as accurate of a measurement as you're going to get. Uh, this tells us exactly where that cartridge is intersecting, uh, or where that bullet is intersecting the lands, and it, we're doing that from the very base of the case being pressed up against the bolt face. And as soon as there's enough clearance for that bolt to fall effortlessly, then you know that right there, just beyond that point, is your land contact. So any amount that you go deeper from here, you'll be off the lands. So if I, say, wanted to start about 10 thousandths off the lands, and I look here and we've got 1.822, then I know that I would need to subtract 10 thousandths from that, and uh, 1.812 would be my base to overall, my base to ogive measurement if I uh, wanted to seat my bullets 10 thousandths off the lands. Now, some guys like a visual confirmation of, of the process. So you can actually see the land engraving if you just take a Sharpie marker and color up the ogive of your bullet and you're just trying to cover up the uh, bearing surface here so that when you chamber this thing you'll be able to see the lands engraving. So once you get this thing colored up you'd then be able to use your caliper and take a measurement here of how much land engraving you have yet and you'd then be able to use that uh, when you're seating your bullet as a little bit of a guide to let you know how much you have to go. I hope you enjoyed our demonstration on how to use a uh, little dummy cartridge, how to set up a dummy cartridge to measure the length to your lands. Uh, if you do this in each of your rifles you're going to get a very accurate measurement. Some bullets are very finicky as far as the seating depth and if you're trying to stay very much in that accuracy node you're going to have to take a very good measurement of exactly where those lands are and stay on top of them in order to uh, get the maximum performance out of your rifle. So uh, this is a easy way to do it without any tools. You don't need to use any of the overall length gauges or anything like that. Uh, you do need a bullet comparator to get an accurate measurement uh, based ogive. Uh, the overall length is definitely not a very good way of measuring. There's as much as 20, 25 thousandths of variation in the bullet tips. So in any event, enjoy and uh, I look forward to hearing some of your experiences with this. If you have any questions or if you'd like to share your experiences, be sure to come and, and post on gunhive.com. That's G-U-N-H-I-V-E.com.